like to warmly welcome you to church this morning. And I hope that you're nice and warm today. It's a somewhat different day to yesterday. Um, but how good is it that we can meet safely this morning to worship our God? Please stand and sing with me. Here I am to worship. person here this morning has had but sometimes it is really hard to just be still and to worship our God. I'm just going to pray and then we're going to sing a song called Lord I Need You. Heavenly Father thank you so much that your Holy Spirit is here with us this morning. In your grace please quieten our hearts Help us, Lord, to focus and draw close to you. You alone are good. Every hour, Lord, we need you. You are our one true defense and our righteousness. Thank you that your grace runs deep. Where your grace is found, that's exactly where you are. Thank you that we can depend on that. As we sing this morning, may our worship to you be pleasing. Amen.
a seat. I would just like to share briefly. Um, I was hoping to play a, a YouTube clip this morning of a song sung by Cody Carnes. It's called Nothing Else. And unfortunately, we couldn't get it to work. Um, but the lyrics are just, they've really spoken to me. And I hope that as I read them this morning, um, they will mean something to you as well. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. More than anything that you can do, I just want you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I sang another, just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. More than anything that you can do, I just want you. Pray that as Brett comes and prays with us this morning, that we do open up our heart and realise that everything else around us should pale in comparison to Jesus himself. Don't come for blessing. Just come to offer yourselves to him. Thanks, Brett. join with me in prayer our heavenly father lord we we thank you that lord you are the creator god we thank you that you spoke this world into existence Lord, we thank you that you've chosen us to be your children and lord we we do just want to thank you lord for for all that you've done for us and lord this morning lord we we um Bring a few people that we know particularly, Lord, to you for prayer. Lord, we, we think of Jeff Johnson. Lord, we know that he's in, in a lot of pain in, in hospital again. Lord, we do ask for, for wisdom, Lord, for the doctors as they, as they seek to treat him and, and particularly to manage his pain. So, Father, we do just ask that, Lord, just particularly at this time, that, that Jeff will really feel your presence with him. And for Carolyn as well as, as she... Spends a lot of time with Jeff and, and um, provides as much assistance as possible there. Lord, for any others too in, in our congregation, Lord, that, that uh, are suffering, Lord, we, we think of Reg, we, we thank you that he was able to be here with us last week. And Lord, we do continue to pray for his ongoing recovery. Lord, this week it's, it's been um, shocking to see um, what happened over in Beirut. Lord, we... We've probably all seen the explosion and, and the um, devastating fallout from that. Lord, we do ask that, that you will, um, Lord, for, for all those who, who lost houses and family members and, Lord, for all of those who are rescuers and, and um, healthcare workers, Lord, we do ask a special blessing there, Lord, and, Lord, that this, this nation, Lord, will, will see a need to turn to you. Lord, we... We, we know that there's um, a lot of people in, in, in that nation, Lord, that don't follow you, but, Lord, there is a remnant of, of Christ followers, and, Lord, we do particularly pray for them, Lord, as, as they lead this nation, as, as it rebuilds, Lord, and it'll take a long time to rebuild from, from this devastation. Lord, for our own country, Lord, with, with um, the, the hard border lockdowns and Victoria in particular, Lord, with regard to um, trying to, to um, minimise the impact of the corona pandemic. Lord, we do ask for, for wisdom for our leaders. Lord, as um, pretty much any, any decision they make has significant impact on, on um, Lord, the community as a whole, Lord, on individuals, on, on individual businesses, Lord, and, 
We do just ask for wisdom, Lord. We thank you for, for Scott Morrison, Lord. We thank you for the premiers. But we just we acknowledge, Lord, that you put people into these positions, Lord, and we do just ask for wisdom in, in how best to um, to deal with this situation, Lord. And Lord, that um, that, that there will be potentially a, a cure or vaccine found for, for this pandemic and so that we can um, I guess go um, continue to go on with, with lives as, as we know it. Um, that, yeah, that perhaps through this time too, Lord, more people are, are being drawn to yourself um, as a result of just realising the things that they thought they could normally do, Lord, if it can be taken away from them and um, Lord, they, they tend to question why they, they've been brought onto this earth. So, Lord, we just, just ask that during this time that, that more will be drawn to you. Lord, for the students too, I just think of, um, you know, particularly the year 12s, Lord, it's been a very disrupted year for, for our high school students and, Lord, as they get closer to um, preparing for final, um, final exams, Lord, that... Um, yeah, the various disruptions won't have a, a significant impact on their learning and, Lord, um, yeah, that they'll be able to get through their studies and um, be able to, to move on to the next phase of their lives through either uni or work or, or whatever that it is that, um, that you've called them to. Lord, I thank you for the youth group here. I thank you for, for Aaron and Beck and, and Lord, their... Um, their, their real keenness, Lord, their willingness to, to lead the youth. And, um, Lord, we, we really look forward to, to seeing how you'll continue to, to move through the young people in this area. And, Lord, for our offerings, Lord, that, that have been given, Lord, we, we just thank you that you give us so much. And, um, Lord, the, the bit that we were able to give back, Lord, we just ask that it will be used wisely, that you'll, you'll give us wisdom as we... Um, work out best ways to distribute the funds and, and to use it to, to run this church, but Lord, also to, to minister to those in other parts of the world. And um, yeah, Lord, we just give you we just give you praise, Lord, for all that you've done. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next song is called Show Us Christ. As we prepare our hearts um, for the message this morning, um, I just felt like this was a good, a good song to get us into um, being prepared to hear what God is going to say through Dale. Um, and also I invite the Focus children at this time, if they would like to uh, move out to their program, that would be wonderful.
if you like to come and bring your greeting and welcomes, or Greg's prepared, welcome as well. Greg's got beautiful little grandkids here this morning, so I wasn't sure if he could pry himself away. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. The reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 to 6, or was it 1 to 9? Anyway, I'll read to 9. Won't hurt. Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, had brought him from the Ishmaelites, who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man, and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hand. So Joseph found favour in his sight and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was in all that he had, in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge. And because of him, he had no concern about anything but the food that he ate. Oh, the next part is about Joseph Potiphar's wife. Do you want to read that? Right on. So Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. There we are. Thanks be to God for his word. Morning, everyone. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, didn't we cover this last week? Didn't Stuart preach a good message last week? It's uh, definitely not like that. I'm not covering the same ground and um, hoping to do a better job than because uh, I couldn't. He did an excellent job and I really appreciated that and um, I know many of you did as well. But this morning I'm just wanting to look at Genesis 39 again from a slightly different perspective. But first, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather here this morning. Uh, Many throughout the world are not afforded the same sort of opportunity. and Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for the protection and provision you've had upon us as a church, as individuals and as a state as well. We ask for your continued provision upon us and protection upon us. But Lord, especially now we ask that you would bless uh, your word the preaching of your word, we pray that, um, that as I speak, that you would speak through me, that you would help me to remove all of myself and, and uh, allow you to speak through me this morning. pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I said, Stuart gave a, a really good message from Genesis 39 and 40 last week, looking at dealing with dark places in our lives and how Joseph dealt with dark places in his life. But this morning I want to look at the integrity of Joseph, um, how he keeps his integrity intact while he deals with these dark places in his life. In his life. Um, we as Christians sometimes have a tendency to look at biblical characters and, and, uh, and look, look at them with rose-coloured glasses. We, we think they're perfect. We think that they had it easy, um, but we forget that they were just as we are. They were human, just like us. They are certainly incredible people that uh, God used to achieve some wonderful and great things, but at the end of the day, they are not perfect. There was only one biblical character who was perfect, and that's Jesus. But when we look at Joseph's integrity this morning, 
remember that it is only second to one. We would do well as Christians to emulate or, or follow Joseph's example of integrity in his life. By definition, integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. I would go a little bit further than this in saying that integrity is being honest and having strong moral principles even when we know that it might cost us, even when we know that we're not being watched. And so integrity is a great Christian character. Let's look at how Joseph exemplifies integrity in the workplace. Can you click the next slide for me, James? Please. And while you do that, So, as we've heard over the last couple of weeks, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers and eventually found himself in the household of Potiphar. He was the captain of the guard of Egypt, a very important guy. Um, if, if the captain of the guard looked after all the guard in Egypt, he looked after the executioners. And so, no doubt, Potiphar was a man to be feared. But what we see in our passage this morning is, is how Joseph shows his integrity in his workplace. And I say that in inverted commas, workplace. He was a slave in Potiphar's house and, he, and, and yet he diligently works to show that God is with him, to show his integrity and he, he becomes successful. He becomes successful right to the point where he was the second man in charge of, of Potiphar's house. And this is due mostly to the fact that God was with him. Um, look at verses 2 to 3. But it was also, it was a decision that Joseph made to not let his situation get the better of him. Verses 2 to 3 says, The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. And he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he had or all that he did to succeed in his hand. As employees or employers or retirees even, we have the opportunity to demonstrate integrity or the lack thereof, um, integrity in our workplaces on, on a daily basis. Through our interaction with workmates, through our interaction with management, with clients, with customers, with fellow employees, there's numerous opportunities for us to demonstrate our integrity in our workplace. It might be the chance for us to reveal the entire truth to a client, knowing that it might cost you a sale or, or a little bit of business. It might be sticking to the speed limit in the truck when everyone else is speeding. It might be leaving that pen or stapler or piece of stationery on the office desk when no one else is looking and not taking it home. To display and, and show integrity in the workplace, as I've said, is a great Christian character. And to develop our work ethic, we should continue to show up for work ready, um, being ready to work before our start time, setting a positive example to other employees, being respectful during conversation and, and conflict, following in and enforcing company policies, respecting other employees and, and our employer in, in particular, and respecting the property that we work on. And I'm sure that Joseph was a slave or a worker, employee, with a work ethic just like this. A guy that would be, um, that anyone would hire at the drop of a hat. But look again at verse 3. There's something interesting in verse 3. Verse 3 says, His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hand. 
The reason why integrity is so important in the workplace is because the world is watching us. Now, if you're a committed Christian, most of the time, everyone that you work with will know that you're a committed Christian, that you at least go to church, that it might have come up in conversation or something like that. And so they know that you believe in Jesus. And these people, each one of them, is watching you and I to see how we react or act in different situations to show how serious we are about our relationship with Jesus. Just as Potiphar was watching Joseph, every one of your workmates, every one of your clients, every one of your employers is watching you to see how serious your relationship with Jesus is. So integrity is as much a, an act of witnessing to the world as it is of keeping a right standing before God. The Apostle Paul uh, gives us clear instruction to employees and he uses the word bondservants, which is essentially a slave. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 to 24, it says, bond servants obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Those words there, do everything as if you were doing it for the Lord. Do you ever think about that when you're at the daily grind of Monday to Saturday or Friday, if you're lucky enough? Nine to five, do you think about whether you're doing it for the Lord or is it, are you working for your boss? When your job gets difficult or there, when there's tension between you and your employer or or, or even our workmates. Remember that you are doing everything as if you are working directly for God himself. Employers, you don't get off scot-free. Chapter 4 of Colossians verse 1 says, Masters, treat your bondservants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Not only do we witness through how we work with and, and for other people, but how we treat our employees as well. And so integrity in the workplace is as important as our, our prayers on Sunday morning or our worship on Sunday morning. Integrity in the workplace is important because it's related to our witness to a world that is lost without Jesus. Our integrity is a demonstration of how we follow Jesus Christ. But integrity in the workplace is important just as, is it, as it is in, in the home as well. Verse 5, it says, From the time they made him overseer, so made Joseph overseer in his house, and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he, Potiphar, left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and because of him he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. Potiphar had no worries about his household, while Joseph, this man of integrity, was in charge. And this causes me to ask this the kind of question, do we display the same sort of integrity in the home as we do outside of the home? Do we demonstrate the same sort of integrity or, or character at church as we do at home? Home is our safe space and, and it includes the ones we love, our family, our spouse, this doesn't mean that we should um, leave our integrity at the door. 
This doesn't mean that we should take advantage of this safe space and, and think that we can treat those within that safe space in any way we choose. Um, in the last 12 months, it was brought to my attention by my wife, uh, probably for the second time, because I'm a slow learner. Um, but it was brought to my attention that I wasn't demonstrating integrity in the home, especially after church on Sundays. Um, I would come to church, be all cheery, organise a church service, preach my heart out, worship God, and then go home and be tired and grumpy and not a man of integrity. If there's, if there's things that we hate as husbands, it's when our wife brings attention to something where we're failing, and even more when we know she's right. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that, that I have it all worked out. There are days where I come home and, and act as less of a man of integrity. And I need to ask for forgiveness from my family for being grumpy after church on Sundays in particular. But integrity at home is as much of an issue of treating those in our home with the same sort of respect, and love and character and attention as those that we do when we're out and about, whether it be at work, at, at, down the shops, at church on Sunday. And this means being able to admit your wrongs. It means being able to admit your failings and confessing this to those in your family. It means being able to ask for forgiveness when you've hurt someone, when they've hurt you. It means keeping your word to your family members. It means helping them and, and doing the things that you said you would do for them. It means honouring those in your family as much as those outside of your family, just because they are your family. This means from parent to child, it means from child to parent in return. And so integrity at home is as much of a witness of our character and our, our relationship with Jesus as integrity in the workplace is. I encourage you to not be someone that you're not or someone that you someone different when you're out and about as opposed to when you are at home. The greatest example of integrity that we get from Joseph this morning is his integrity in the workplace and in the home as well. But greater than that is the integrity that he shows around sexual relationships. Have a look at verse 7 for me. The end of verse 6 says, Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. What a temptation. Joseph was a rugged, handsome teenager, all of about maybe 15 to 17 years old. No doubt with hormones in full force and to rationalise this temptation would have been simple. No one would ever know. It's just you and her in the house. Your family are miles away in the land of Canaan. She wants you. She's throwing herself at, is throwing herself at you. Everyone else is doing it. It could advance your career in the household even further, and especially it's what your brothers would do. Joseph shows an amazing amount of restraint and integrity, and he refuses flat out to do this with his master's wife. Verses 8 to 12. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything 
that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything back anything from me except for you, because you are his wife. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her, to lie beside her, or to be with her. But one day when he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house were in there, in, there in the house, she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out of the house. Potiphar's wife then stitches up Joseph on trumped up charges of sexual assault and Joseph then finds himself in, thrown in prison, which was what we heard about last week. But in all of this time, in all of these situations, Joseph's integrity remains intact. He did not give in to the continual day after day temptation from Potiphar's wife. In fact, he equated the, the acceptance of, of her offer to sleep with her as sinning with or against God. Have a look again at verse 9. It says, He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything back from, from me except for you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph saw the greater evil not as sinning against his Martha and sleeping with, her, with his wife, but sinning against God himself. Joseph was a man of integrity and he considered uh, and was more concerned about what God thought of his integrity rather than what he, his master might think. And he knew that it was a grave misuse of the trust that Joseph had with, with his master if he was to sleep with his wife. Don't you hate it when tractors, interesting tractors drive past during your sermon? A pinnacle moment. <laughs> so the greatest sin in this situation was to go against the ideal that God had for relationships that God had ordained that it would be one man and one woman for the for the entirety of their lives and so Joseph knew that this was a wrong thing to do and he flat out refused now in this day of of the sexualization of just about everything it's important that we as adults regularly consider our sexual integrity. It's just as important for us to do that, uh, for, for us to teach our children and our teenagers to do the same sort of thing. To make a commitment to, can you go back one slide, James, please? To make a commitment to keep our sexual integrity intact. Kirsten Jensen, a, a Christian um, psychologist, says that sexual integrity is being honest and careful with my sexual power by using it only within a committed relationship. She doesn't say marriage there, but I would. To show love and affection for my spouse and to create a family. Sexual integrity means that I do not use pornography to excite my body because that is misusing the purpose of my sexual power as well as misusing others. To make a commitment to keep our sexual integrity intact takes a great deal of self-control, just as Joseph shows here in, in uh, Genesis 39. When at every glance, whether we're on the computer, whether we're down the street, there's something that could entice us. To turn away from that, to not look at that or dwell on those sights and those thoughts 
takes a great deal of willpower. And yet it, was, it is very rewarding to do this. Not to just make an internal commitment to sexual integrity, but to carry it out. You will reap the rewards within your marriage, within your relationships, and with God as well. If we allow ourselves to engage in or, or dwell on thoughts of any kind of sexual nature that are outside of the marriage relationship, we have the very grave danger of finding ourselves in a position that we don't want to be in. To find ourselves further down the rabbit hole as, as Alice in Wonderland, to use that analogy. To, to be in a place where we're just continually going further and further and further away from God. The Mrs. Potiphar's of the world um, entice us with sexual gratification but then leave us in a position where we're more and more empty, less and less satisfied and, and more and more guilty. We're wise to make a commitment to sexual integrity internally but then to carry it out, to run away from anything that entices is more, all more wise. But then further upon that is that even more wise to make the commitment now when you're in a strong and healthy relationship to not even be in the same places as the Mrs. Potiphar's of the world, to make a commitment to be seen or not seen to be sexually integral. In a Bible college, in a lecture, uh, while I was there, one of the lectures to lecturers told us about the commitment that he made in pastoral ministry before he was a, a Bible college lecturer to never visit a female congregation member while her husband was not at home while he was in pastoral ministry in that position. If he ever turned up and, and if the husband was not at home, he would still stay and, and visit, but visit from the front door or veranda. He would talk to the, the wife, but not enter the home. Of course, there would be exceptions to this rule when visiting uh, widows and, and the like, but the principle stands. The commitment was there. And I've made that same sort of uh, commitment. I, I do make exceptions when visiting widows and that sort of thing. But if ever I visit and your husband is not at home, please don't be offended if I don't enter the house. If I if flat out refuse to enter the house, this is not just to protect your sexual integrity, but my own as well. To be seen, to be doing the right thing in every situation. As I said, to make a commitment to protect our sexual integrity takes a great deal of self-control. But it is worth it. To make a commitment to not view pornography, to not view anything that would entice on the internet, on YouTube, on TVs, movies, or even down the street, takes a great deal of self-control. But it is worth it. This morning, if there is a need for you to examine your own sexual integrity, I encourage you to do so. If there is a need to make a commitment to sexual integrity from this time on, I encourage you to do so. And if there is a need to seek forgiveness for sinning against God in any sexual area or in any area of integrity, I encourage you to do so today. Your response might be, it's so hard in this day and age to, to be a man of integrity or a person of integrity, sorry. It's so hard in this cutthroat business kind of world, in this sexually charged world, in this, in this sinful world, to be a man or a person of integrity. 
Let me read to you from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. It says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus knows what it's like to be tempted in every way as we are. He was tempted with power, with fame, with um, the possessions of the world, with food, with satisfying the flesh. And he was tempted to the point of death. And yet he never sinned. And that's the Jesus that we follow, folks. That's the Jesus that we seek to live and exemplify our life after. He never never disobeyed God and never sinned and he yet endured the pain and, and agony of the cross, the shame of the cross, so that God might be glorified in his life, so that we might see, uh, receive forgiveness as well. I encourage you this morning to, to look to Jesus as an example of integrity, to even just come one step lower and look to Joseph as an example of integrity. This morning I also want you to know that if there have been times where your integrity has not been kept intact, where you've done things outside of the character that Jesus offers us, I want you to know that there is forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus and renewal of your mind. But I also want you to know that to make that, um, to make a commitment to keep our integrity intact through following Jesus will glorify Him, will glorify God in how we live our lives. We'll we'll seek to, will be a witness to a world around us. But also be encouraged that we're not in this alone. We have the support and love of one another here. We have um, each other to spur us on to love and good works, to, to be people of integrity. And if you see someone or know of someone within the church here that, that does something to jeopardize their integrity, talk to them. Seek to help them quickly. Seek to restore them gently and and quickly and keep your own integrity intact by not gossiping about them. But if you need help in any area of integrity, there are numerous people here that I'm sure you trust that you could seek to um, organise a relationship of accountability with. If you need help with Uh, Anything on the internet, there are apps, there are programs that can help with your integrity. I even use some of them myself. Integrity is something that is a great witness to the world around us. Integrity is something that keeps us, our character, keeps us in tune with God, close to God. And integrity is something that we all must uphold. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you again for the examples of people in Scripture, human beings just like us. And Lord, we thank you for Joseph's example this morning of how Joseph glorifies you through his integrity, of how he, he works as if he was working for the Lord in a dark place, how he keeps his integrity intact in prison, how he keeps his integrity intact in, in sexual relationships in the face of temptation. Lord, we thank you for that example. But Lord, greater still, we thank you for the integrity of Jesus who was 
willing to undergo temptation and yet was without sin. Who was willing to to go through the pain and the shame and the agony of the cross in order that his integrity might be kept intact, in order that the relationship with you might be restored for, for us, that we might have forgiveness of sins and new life and our minds renewed day by day. Lord, help us be a people of integrity in area, every area of our life, within the work um, environment, within our homes, within what we look at, think about, and how we act. Lord, I pray that you would continue to change our character to be more and more like Jesus every day so that we might win souls for you, so that through us you might witness to a world of, of how glorious and wonderful you are, and so that we might see people in heaven because of the integrity of ourselves, because of what you are doing through us. Lord, we pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. As the um, music team come and and um, lead us in the final song, I'll just do the announcements now, if that's all right. Um, there is a, a newsletter. I printed out a big one for myself. Uh, there is a newsletter this morning, and in it, it tells us about the um, members' meeting on the 23rd. So that's another two weeks away. There are the nominations for deacons and elders there, which have now closed. And so I ask that you prayerfully consider the following nominations. Um, all who are continuing deacons and some continuing elders. Uh, Jason Windoff and Ted Stubbersfield for the, for the deacons. Chris Meir and Greg Sharp, David Leake and Brett Garmaster for the elders. So if you would please prayerfully consider that. Uh, we will be voting on those nominations in uh, two weeks' time on the, at, the, at the members' meeting following the service. Um, and the other thing I have to mention is the email that I received from Lachlan and Tiffany during the week. I'll read it to you. It says, Hey, everyone. We are very excited to be returning home and seeing you all. Currently, and as long as God is willing, we have flights booked for us to, uh, us to arrive on the 1st of September. Although in this whole COVID situation, this could change as the dates approach. We will have two weeks of quarantine when we arrive, so please pray about how we will pay for that. And we would love to organise some opportunities to share about OM in Albania, our ministry and other stuff that people might like to hear once we're out of quarantine. We love you all. We're looking forward to seeing you all again face to face, maybe through masks, it says. Um, so, Chris and Georgie, have you got a final figure on what the hotel quarantine would be? So let's say approximately $4,000. Um, if you would like to contribute financially to that, please let myself know or Jason, our treasurer, know how you can do that. The um, bank details are in the bulletin. If you would like to do that anonymously, that can be arranged as well. And, um, well, it will all be anonymous. The only people that will know is those that need to know and um, it won't come back to Lachlan and Tiffany as to who has done what. Uh, but so, yeah, if you would like to contribute financially to that, but also also ask that you'll be praying for Lachlan and Tiffany as they uh, seek to come back from Albania and enter the country, pray for their protection, particularly from this virus at this time. Thanks, Jody.
in February all going well. So they're just here for a short time um, to do some defecation and also to have the baby. So the plan is to, to head back. just like to encourage everybody to remember that our Father is everlasting. He is ever forgiving should we choose to repent before him. In closing our service this morning, um, my song I've picked is this, I believe. And I pray that as we sing it, we will just once again declare who it is that we believe in. And the Father, the Son, the Spirit, the resurrection the holy name of Jesus is absolutely life-giving. So don't leave this morning feeling overwhelmed and as though you have a lot to do for yourself because Jesus has done it. We just need to be honest with him in our current position. So please stand and sing this I Believe. that in your grace we would cast out all doubt that you are who you say you are 
that we can walk into this week fixing our eyes completely on Jesus as our perfect example. Thank you for your holy word that has been written to encourage us that you have used the lives of ordinary people in absolutely extraordinary ways. And I thank you, Lord, that whenever we read your word, there is always, always a message of hope. I pray, Lord, that we would encourage one another throughout this week. I pray, Father God, that we would remember to pray for protection around one another this week. You alone are good. You were tempted in every way, and yet you stay 100% close to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. May we go into this week knowing that we're not alone, that we do have each other, but even better than that, we have Jesus Christ right beside us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for this moment in time that we have been able to spend with you. But may we continue to walk into this week with you. Amen. Thank you all for joining us.